if the largest asset management company in the world mm-hmm. blackrock is coming and saying that this is the future this is an asset that can protect you this is a technology that can end corruption banning or keeping it away or telling that you shouldn't be you know having any exposure to it that is not the right approach so there is still a misconception that crypto is equal to blockchain crypto is equal to binance crypto is equal to some another multi level marketing company or their product so ee misconception nilkuna samayathum i want to know why bitsave exists and how are you going to solve this dilemma and how are you going to penetrate this market now binance did not do that kucoin mm. did not do that and that is why fiu said you are operating illegally in mm. india and that is why the urls are blocked right now mm. see anyone can teach you indicators anyone can True. teach you charts but at the end of the day the difference comes in how you handle it's all about the mind all about the mind you are competing with asset managers of big fund houses mm. who are professionally qualified welcome back to another wow packed episode of the legion show in and kodi illada a certified trader a very qualified trader who could who could tell you about every psychology and everything behind trading and he is going to introduce you to a very interesting and a very unique product which is going to solve literally um, almost every problem as a crypto investor or trader face in this day and age so let's welcome mr zakil thank you thanks for having me it's a pleasure so to begin with who are you actually and what are you doing <laughs> yeah so i am a pure crypto trader okay. and an asset manager hmm. uh, i started or i discovered crypto back in 2014 mm-hmm. uh, and i was fascinated by how this technology could sort of transform how finance is done mm. globally mm. Uh, back in those days i was interning for my ca and on one side i was dealing with the slow net banking that sbi is offering mm. and on the other side i figured out this is technology that works 24 by 7 borderless and very cheap mm. and that's when i understood you know by by realizing that where the world is heading to mm. by or let's say because internet also was just picking up right so if Correct. internet penetration is happening you also need that level of a financial system Right, mm. which complements the speed and the transparency that internet has. Yeah. So that's why I realized the potential of this technology long back, mm. and uh, I started investing back then. Mm. And uh, I've been full time involved with the space since 2017. Mm. And uh, right now, I run a, a crypto fund management company mm. called Bitsave. Yeah. So that's what I do, and I'm also a CMT level three qualified trader, which is mm. sort of equivalent to a CA for mm-hmm. accounting, but this is more of for for traders. Okay. So yeah, I do my share bit of trading and also asset management, mm. very specific to crypto. Yeah. yeah, interesting journey, isn't it? You you know that even though we all praise about the technology and how. Uh, we need it in this today's day and age. There is a resistance that we face when we jump into this. Yeah. And why do you think that resistance still exists? Why do you think that the institutions are totally against it, kind of controlling <laughs> it, putting a lot of tax and everything on it? Why do you think that there is this resistance? And on top of which, you are building a product, yeah. the same domain. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> how are you going to, um, you know, face all that struggles and challenges? So let's start with the resistance yeah. that. we face yeah. when we jump into crypto i think the biggest uh, hurdle for all of us right now or for the industry as a whole right now is a lack of regulations True. you know most when we speak to most of the investors or let's say asset managers from the traditional space the first question or the first level of discussion is usually revolved or you know it's all always around the regulatory you know uncertainty like what the government is going to do tomorrow yeah or the high taxation that the government has introduced yeah. so i think uh, even for a trader right now you know there's at 1% tds and you can't set off the set off the loss against the gains that you make in the in so from a normal investor perspective they are also al- always like you know it's highly the tax rate is so high mm-hmm. so i would rather you know invest into something that is giving me maybe a lower return but at still at a very lower tax tax rate right mm. so i think that whole uh, regulatory unclarity and the whole uh, you know high tax rates is one of the major challenges where uh, that our audience usually you know uh, complain about mm. and i think from the institutions part there are two sides to it i feel one is 
it's extremely difficult to understand the technology for them you mm. know like i think uh, most regulators they don't even want to attempt uh, to you know or let's say put in the effort to understand the technology mm. uh, and also if you look at it right there's this thing called recency bias where most of us or most people started hearing about crypto associated with a negative thing let's say it's Correct. used for uh you know like drugs it's used for yeah. some human trafficking mm-hmm. and it stays with you got yeah. it like even though there's so much of advancement the, even though the percentage of uh, you know crypto transaction used for these kind of activities is too mm-hmm. low but since you it got introduced this technology with something of this sort mm-hmm. or you know you you read about someone getting scammed or you got scammed yourself you mm. know trying to do something in crypto so you have that bias towards this whole industry or an asset class mm. so i think uh, that is one way uh, that is one one of the reasons why uh, from from a regulatory point of view or from a institutional point of view there is some uh, resistance and mm. on the other side if you look at it you know look at india as a country mm. right india as a country is a closed environment or let's say it's a, our financial system is pretty closed for yeah. example if you are in dubai and i just want to send you some funds let's say uh, mm. without a proper uh, reason attached to it mm. you're not selling me anything you know mm. i can't basically because yeah. uh, if if the money has to go out of this country mm. uh, they have defined it can only happen for so and so purposes i True. can't just send you money just like how i send you upi within india mm. right because and i believe that is one of the reasons why india is you know um, sort of stable in terms of we have a stable uh, currency uh, mm. you know uh, compared to for example last couple of years a lot of global currencies were falling against uh, yeah, dollar infl- inflation yeah, is inflation is but we are fortunate to have a stable system mm. because of all these measures which is which is a good thing yeah uh, right uh, but so my point being because of all these uh, you know constraints that we have in a country like india mm. it may not be feasible or practical for the regulator to come and say that you know people can transact or start mm. transacting in crypto mm. because if you see a lot of these chinese fraud lent loan apps that happened right mm. the way they were able to take that money out of india was through crypto, crypto. right so i get that angle also you know mm. i get that angle also wh- where uh, crypto as a currency can sort of be a problem mm. to some of the regulators or some of the institutions mm. uh, that is where if you remember you know we started calling it as cryptocurrency and now the shift of the narrative in india is mostly towards crypto as an asset Correct. right we call it virtual digital asset yeah. and most of the exchanges most of the companies that build in crypto mm. if you have seen their language that they use they all mm. call it as crypto asset mm. because 2020 and 2021 government in fact was planning to ban crypto as a yeah. whole like the entire industry they even prepared a bill for that yeah. that is when the industry came together couple of uh, agencies that help governments to mm. regulate crypto they all came together and they told look there's another way to look at how this industry works yeah. and uh, maybe you can remove the currency part mm. uh, and just place it as an asset where mm. you will not have all these issues of you know terror financing mm. or money laundering mm. um, so i think uh, uh, we we understand both the both the perspectives mm. here but my point always being this is a solution you know yeah. uh, you know banning or keeping it away or telling that you shouldn't be you know uh, mm. having any exposure to it that is not the right approach mm. uh, like let's say if if uh, the capital going out of the country is your problem mm. then there's always a way to maybe create a lo- closed ecosystem yeah. to solve for it yeah and uh, on the other end if you don't want to understand it Mm. i mean or let's say if your problem is that you don't understand the technology you can always spend time and figuring yeah. it out right yeah. and and then you make a call whether you like it or not mm. most people when you hear you you will realize that they don't even understand the fundamentals of how how the technology works so i think True. lack of a- awareness is one uh, you know one of the major things and mm. also i feel uh, uh, the the community wise also or let's say the investors also needs to see it as a long term a uh, serious investment option yeah. rather than let's say chasing for that next 100x yeah you know where so 
government or the regulators at their job at the end of the day is to protect you right or the protect sure. the normal common user or common investor who don't understand any of these things for example let's say if you remember in the 90s there were a lot of scams in stock market yeah. right now it's not possible to do anything because sebi has came up with a lot of measures mm. uh, so if if lot of people are just losing money in crypto by investing into some random things mm. i don't know whether they will also take us seriously you got it for example uh, the largest if you, i think end of last year a lot of exchanges were publishing their year end reports on mm. what people are investing on their exchange most of the most of the exchanges the top invested assets were mostly meme tokens yeah right so and now how are we expecting our regulator to take mm. us seriously right yeah. so i think uh, we also have to you know the the mm. quality of Uh, the people involved or let's say the narratives within the community should also change accordingly so that mm. we bring a positive change in yeah. the in the years to come because it's already happening in the west right True. like let's say if 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 the largest asset management company in the world mm. blackrock is coming and saying that this is the future yeah this is an asset that can protect you mm. you know and the next step is going to be tokenization mm. every financial asset is going to be on blockchain and yeah. this is a technology that can end corruption yeah. right so they all they understood it yeah. right so i think it's just a matter of time mm. so we have to position ourselves correctly now to move in mm. that in that right direction yeah so yeah this resistance still we exist still exist i think um, i think it's because uh, other existing financial instruments has all these regulatory bodies controlling it like cb and other other uh, you know um, regulatory yeah. bodies that is managing it just like you mentioned that in the earlier days all of them were scams yeah <laughs> then later on they were all accepted yeah. because they saw yeah. that money pouring into that yeah. industry yeah. and ev- even now if you look at it crypto the money is pouring in it's still go- going in we are number 1 in the in the term, Carry, number in, in the percentage of holders and yeah. investors in crypto but if you look at the current scenario kind of all the bigger exchanges all the indian exchanges they're all facing this fiu other com- uh, you know regulatory yeah, compliances yeah. so don't you think that this will again put um, another resistance towards a new crypto since we are looking for another uh, bull run mm-hmm. uh, arguably we are in uh, end of in, the bear run. yeah yeah so i think from I, since you you know uh, mentioned about fiu there's a lot of misconception around what what actually is this fiu compliance yeah. you know which which uh, people are talking about these days mm. so uh, last year crypto was included or let's say the the companies that are uh, offering crypto related services were mm. included in Uh, PMLA which is prevention of money laundering act yeah okay so what it basically means is all these KYC measures or reporting measures that are applicable to banks or NBFCs mm. those things apply to crypto entities also so there's sort of a not a very clear recognition but at least some sort of a recognition that this is also a financial entity you know or let's say financial service provider in this country mm. which was a positive step okay okay now uh, every entity that or let's say any industry players mm. uh, on whom this whole act is applicable mm. needs to register themselves as a reporting entity with fiu so fiu is financial intelligence unit of india so okay. almost all the countries have this unit mm. and in india also we have one uh, so the idea of this registration is that all those shady activities that you see on the platform mm. or high value transactions that you see on the platform or let's say you saw you call it unusual suspicious you know all those transactions that you see on the platform you are required to report to them okay. so that they can take the necessary action so far even if a terrorist was you know transacting there's nothing it it was up to us whether we have to report or not okay. and we can't we are not investigators at the end of the day right mm. so now what we can do is there's a legal way we can mm. tell them ki this is what is happening on this platform mm. this is the user is doing so and so thing now let them take care if okay. you know they can you can freeze the funds or whatever and let them take care mm. so this is what happened with that which i feel is a positive thing True. because right now uh, a, a person who is who has some sort of a shady uh, background or mm. some sort of a problem in the source of funds they might be a bit resistant towards using mm. you know exchanges so mm. the the industry as a whole all the uh, becomes a bit more cleaner 
if True. you actually think about it True. right and which will uh, definitely be you know make other people more secure got mm-hmm. it you know instead of seeing this as an industry with a lot of people trying to scam you know the the normal investors now uh, people who are sitting on the sidelines or let's say people are used to investing in fds or mutual funds traditional mutual funds mm-hmm. for that matter they might feel a bit more secure in invest in investing into or being involved or signing up on any of these platforms because yeah. uh, there is a regulatory or I mean you know there's someone seeing or seeing at watching. least the transactions correct someone See, is watching this someone is watching what you're doing on these yeah. platforms now uh, what happened with binance mm. you know or let's say the the block url block that is going on is yeah. basically since every entity regardless of where they are registered mm. you know so uh, people thought that it's only for indian companies yeah. you know or inter- companies registered in india but that's not the case every entity that is serving indian customers mm. for that matter they need to be registered with fiu mm. right now uh, binance did not do that kucoin mm. did not do that mm. and that is why fiu said you know you are operating illegally in mm. india uh, and that is why the urls are blocked right now mm. so now we have to wait and watch mm. whether these companies are going to come and register with india mm. and it it's not a big challenge like even we are in the process of uh, you know registering with fiu the only challenge that is going to be there for so many companies that you are required to pay tax in india yeah got it so that might be a bit tricky for an exchange like binance so we we'll, mm. we have to wait and see how they are going to tackle that mm. but coming back to your original question i think fiu or all these legal recognition in a way it's mm. a good thing and Correct. coming i mean uh, honestly there are i i meet some people who say that since it's taxed we are a bit more confident to invest now because there's yeah. some sort of a legal recognition right Correct. instead of not having any clarity regardless mm. of the high tax rate or whatever they mm. still feel that it's a positive thing that the government has done in terms of mm. recognizing the asset class mm. and i think as we speak uh, they are already working on the regulation you know the regulatory mm. bill because india themselves took the initiative in g20 mm. right to to push imf to come up with a global uh, you know global level uh, consensus mm. that most of the countries will have to agree mm. to a common Uh, rule mm. that this is how we are going to regulate the industry and then every country can have their own uh, you know uh, ref i mean based on the, the one particular uh, rule book you can have your own version of it yeah. but a lot of things have to be common in terms of data sharing mm. you know in terms of uh, how different people different users in different countries are interacting mm. you know all those things right yeah. so i think we are moving positively but as mm. you know you know things take time right and i keep telling people that we are still 15 year old industry right mm. we don't have a reference like every other asset class that we know existed for a longer time so yeah. we don't we never saw another asset class at this low mm. it's basically in teenage and if you yeah. see the mainstream it's just last 6 or 7 years true right so i think uh, these things are good mm. uh, but again we have to uh, make sure that Uh, people in the community are also aware what is going on because a lot mm. of people think they don't even know why binance is not working for them now yeah. so they feel that it's a it's a action against crypto yeah. and not really offshore entity so they yeah. might feel ki let me not sign up on an indian exchange also today because mm. this might happen to an indian exchange also tomorrow mm. right but i think it's important that we all you know uh, educate the public that this is why this is happening and mm. there are i guess as we speak there are 31 uh, registered fiu registered entities in india mm. not just india this i think couple of them are outside india also mm. so uh, you they won't they're not going to face this kind of a uh, issue mm. later right so maybe a safer thing to do from a, a newcomer perspective would be maybe opt for those instead mm. of because right now i don't know how exactly someone can access binance right mm. i i i i get messages saying ki my funds are stuck now how do i so you don't want such sort of a uh, you know experience for someone that is starting so it's yeah. always safe to uh, opt for some platform that is compliant with the current rules yeah. let's see what how it evolves tomorrow but yeah. maybe that can be a good uh, filter for you or you know selection criteria for, for you on which platform to opt for yeah 
So there is still a misconception that crypto is equal to blockchain and crypto is equal to Binance and mm-hmm. crypto is equal to some another multi-level marketing company or their product or crypto is equal to something else. Yeah. So this e- e misconception is um, you not know, solving that dilemma. It's, it's, it's been yeah. a challenging journey for someone like me, someone like you, of course. You're building something in this domain, right? So as a founder of a, a BitSafe, I, I want to know why BitSafe exists and how are you going to solve this dilemma and how are you going to penetrate this market? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm biased. Because most people, our first uh, point of interaction with, with the technology, mm-hmm. it will stay in your head. Yeah. If, if, if the first interaction with crypto, if it's through a telegram mm. group that mm. is that scammed you, mm. you will forever believe that crypto is a scam, right? Mm. So I think uh, if it, it's, if, uh, for example, if we the mango drink, you relate, you call it fruity, right? Mm. So I'm going to buy crypto is Binance or crypto is Azirex or because people might not know uh, a world outside the yeah. platform that they use. I can give you a very good example. So I was part of Coinex, which was one of the largest exchanges in India. Mm. Because of regulatory reasons, we had to close down the exchange in 2019. Mm. We told that, we said we are discontinuing the services on so-and-so date. Mm. And what happened on that day was, every user had an option to transfer their assets mm. to another exchange mm. and keep it there. But majority of our users were just selling mm. and taking out INR. And you won't believe this. One USDT, which is market value, I think back then was around 75 mm. rupees. It was trading at 18 rupees. <laughs> Just because people didn't know that there is a way you can take it outside and mm. get this much of value. Mm. They are like, this is the world. This is crypto for us. Mm. So if they are shutting down, it's over. So you better sell, get whatever you get and mm. take it out. Right? Mm. I think our point of you know uh, where you start and the sort of things that you hear all these things matters mm. we you end up with all all these biases like mm. i was talking about now i think this is also one reason why bitsave exists mm-hmm. right because now we want to be a be one of the easiest way people get started in crypto okay um in a very user friendly way in mm. a very uh, easy way mm. and from a investment perspective also mm. it's a very you know like a, it's a boring way of investing but mm. it's 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 designed for long term wealth creation mm. for example uh, you ask any financial uh, advisors mm. they will tell you that the best way to invest in any asset class is pick up an index fund True. Right. Uh, for example, you want to invest in India, the India story that is so popular right now, you go and pick up a Nifty 50 index fund, mm. which is by any of the AMCs in, in mm. India. Or you, you are bullish on US as a economy, you go and invest into an S&P 500 index fund. Mm. Right. Uh, so when we looked at it, we were like, we have literally no options mm. for something like that in crypto. Mm. Right. Like I want to invest in crypto. Mm. not really a Bitcoin or Ethereum. Mm. I want to invest in crypto because I believe in the future of this industry. I don't have an index fund to invest in. Mm. And all the options that I have is maybe, or not I have, like all the options that currently exist is maybe restricted to uh, HNIs or institutions Mm. or maybe just people in US, Mm. things like that. So we wanted to solve for that because Mm. people get started in the industry the right way. Mm. Got it. Uh, Which doesn't promise you returns mm. because you can't in mm. a public market you can't promise returns right uh, or it doesn't uh, expose you to all these uh, you know like new meme tokens or all these hype uh, based tokens or uh, so we wanted to do it the the right way mm. uh, and uh, that is why the idea of BitSafe came in because we felt that there's so much of noise there's so much of negativity that is going on which is hurting the industry which mm. is sort of uh, damaging the image of crypto as a asset class mm. right um, so we were like what can we do as people mm. who've been in the industry for so long what can we do to solve for that how can we bring in more legitimacy to the platform how mm. can we bring in more transparency to the platform sorry to interrupt you there if you could just give 
the audience mm-hmm. what actually bit saved us yeah. it would be great yeah yeah so like i said uh, uh, we lack uh, so let's say prior to bit save you, you were we were lacking a way to invest into a crypto index yes right so uh, most people i believe are familiar with something like a nifty 50 or a snp 500 which mm-hmm. is a basket of the top uh, indian stocks or us stocks yeah uh, so equivalent to that we have a uh, index called bloomberg galaxy crypto index mm. which is managed completely by bloomberg okay. so bloomberg will select the best assets mm. or best crypto assets to be part of this index mm. um, so what we do is we are a licensed entity by bloomberg okay. uh, to build a fund or mm. let's say a mutual fund as mm. people call it based on this index that mm. bloomberg manages so basically how it works is whatever money that you put in let's say you want to invest 10000 rupees into mm. crypto mm. you come to bit save you sign up you do the kyc you mm. invest that 10000 rupees mm. now what happens is that bloomberg has told us at mm. this particular point in time these are the components of the index mm. so they select up to 12 assets mm. as part of the index so currently there are 12 assets which is mm. selected you know f- from mm. the top 25 universe basically they remove all these meme tokens they remove all these stable coins they remove all these fundamentally weak projects so mm. even though ftx was a top 10 token they did not include it even yes. though luna was a top 10 token they did not include it because yes. they saw the risk associated with with these kind of tokens interesting um so uh and so my point being it's it's a d- designed primarily for portfolios okay. got it right rather than a market weighted index which mm-hmm. can be a bit tricky in crypto if mm-hmm. you look at it yeah. right because any random token can be a part of the top 10 right Correct. so they bring in their research angle to it okay. which which i love the most about bloomberg index okay um, so it's a lot safer than something else mm. uh, so let's say your 10000 goes into these components these mm. 12 components that are part of the index mm. um and we we store it completely in st- cold storage okay so unlike an exchange where it's partly cold and partly hot we don't mm. do that mm. the the moment we complete your a- allocation mm. right we move it completely to cold storage mm. and Uh, every month bloomberg will update the index as in they might change the weights here and there you know mm. like for example solana might be 8% this month mm. next next month it may, might become 10% mm. so we move that that portion back to an exchange mm. account that we hold mm. and uh, we rebalance mm. right we make those adjustment put it back to cold storage i see that's right so, and uh, when i say cold storage uh, we operate with 100% transparency mm. uh, by transparency i mean that all our wallets are exposed as in it's all uh, you can you can view mm. uh, all these assets sitting in cold storages mm. 20 24 by 7 on our app mm. so you can basically uh, you know i think that is one luxury that we have with blockchain right okay. traditionally you can't prove that you have uh, 100 shares of reliance but yeah. we can if i am saying that i have one bitcoin i can actually show that i have one bitcoin yeah. so uh, we have created proof of reserves mm. and also proof of liabilities mm. uh, because what we do is it might sound a bit technical but what we do is we do our accounting also on chain okay so let's say you give money mm. i record it on chain that mirzad of course i don't put the name to it but i record that so and so person has or let's say this person or today i have received this much of money okay. so that uh, my how much i owe you is mm. also on blockchain okay understood mm. so for example the biggest uh, biggest criticism against proof of reserves is it's just one side of the balance sheet mm. right now an exchange can show you that i have 500 million worth of assets mm. but how much do you owe is mm. a question right True. but what we have done is that we have created both sides of the balance sheet on blockchain so that okay. you can see that i so as we speak our aum is around 1 1 cr yeah. right so you can see and that aum can you break down AM? yeah so aum is basically assets under management okay. which means uh, the value of the assets that we manage today is around 1 mm. 1 crore so you have 1 crore worth of asset under your platform yeah yeah and under so people have invested and how many users are there at the moment so we have more than 300 paying clients okay uh, so i think the sign up is around 1500 but okay. Uh, n- not everyone has invested right okay. and so the metric which matters to us is how how many people have invested mm. uh, so there's more than 300 paying clients who have mm. put uh, you know the current value of what they've invested so far is around 1 okay. cr 
so you can see that uh, i owe you 1 cr and mm-hmm. on the other side you can go and see verify that i have 1, 1 CR. cr with me of all these assets lying down uh, in in the custody interesting so that is what we do so the advantage for a normal user is you don't have to do the research yeah. on which token to invest how much mm. to invest and all those things mm. and most importantly you don't have to keep a track mm. of how the market is evolving so just mm. to uh you know give give our you uh, listeners uh, an idea crypto is a very competitive space it is right so 10 years back if you look at the top 10 assets mm. i think only four of them are still in top 10 yeah some of them is no more mm. because the competition might just kill or any of these you know like hacks a lot of things can happen right mm. uh so if you are investing in long term mm. and just leaving it there in single assets it could be a very risky thing to do mm. and that is why even though we say hodl hodl mm. but it might be a very dangerous strategy in crypto because if you are hodling the wrong asset mm. you basically losing your There's money no right there's no it. point in 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 doing it so i think uh, on bit say we can hodl the right way mm. because the product itself is it will evolve mm. for example uh today you have something like an xlm or an atom mm. uh, as part of the index and tomorrow if these projects are not performing well mm. bloomberg will remove them so we will sell them and add whatever bloomberg selects as the next big thing or the next potential token mm. right so you don't have to keep a track of how the industry is performing how uh, each each asset is performing mm. all that we take care of for you mm. right so uh, that is one advantage that you have so mm. you don't have to i think you know we i think you can also relate to it we constantly meet a lot of people who have interest to invest in crypto but yeah. they're not because they're not able to figure out yeah. you know what where to start which asset to buy all yeah. those things and we solve for all of that mm. uh, and most importantly i think from a indian investor point of view mm. the there's a tricky part in our tax rules right mm. which is uh, you can't set off your loss yeah. against uh, the gains so on bit say what basically happens is that you're investing into uh into the unit of the fund basically mm. got it so you're not buying a bitcoin or you're not buying a uh, ethereum mm. but you're buying a sort of a unit of something that gives you everything mm. right so uh, the unit itself is a vda and you know, as per the tax rules right okay. virtual digital asset okay so you can actually you don't have to be bothered about you know what we are doing in the back end in mm-hmm. terms of how much profit ethereum made or how much profit bitcoin made mm. you can just show to your to the government that i invested this much and this much is the profit i made overall okay. so it saves you from that whole no set off sort of a tricky yeah. situation that we have right now yeah. so we have that advantage in terms so they are of, investing in as a unit so that they'll have to show only the unit yeah. uh, and it's, it's actually we have so since i i, I mentioned about the to, uh, transparency part right mm. so uh, we are actually tokenizing it okay. for example uh, if you buy a uh, let's say if you buy a icici mutual fund mm. it's just a number that you see on on the screen that okay. you have this much units of the fund mm. but what we do is that we issue that tokens also so let's say if you come onto the platform and buy 100 uh, units of the fund we will be issuing you 100 tokens we okay. do it on polygon right now okay so uh, there's a it's a token that derives value from the underlying asset okay understood okay right so uh, what you're essentially buying is a token Okay. and we have one to one backing which you can verify at mm. any point mm. uh, so uh, in in your itr it can go as one investment okay. because you, you what you actually buy is the token and mm. not really the underlying investments okay so does that give any advantage for the investor and how does it solve the existing yeah so the advantage is for example see the advantage right now is you buy bitcoin you buy ethereum right yeah. and you made 100 rupee profit in bitcoin you made 100 rupee loss in ethereum so mm. net you did not make any money Mm. but you still have to pay tax on that 100 rupee that you made on bitcoin yeah. right but right now since you're buying into a token mm. that derives value from what is happening in the back end you don't have to bother about these things mm. so so essentially if you look at it if there was a token mm. that represent these two transactions the value of the token will remain the same yeah. got it because 100 rupees went up in bitcoin 100 rupees went up in so your tax would be zero Yeah. and like if you're doing it you have to end up paying 30 30 rupees tax yeah. got it so that is an advantage that you have with the mutual fund model that we have 
so yeah that's i think these are the major uh, mm. things and most importantly you get to do it uh, on a completely transparent platform mm. and uh, we also provide you a financial planner service mm. which means that if you're unsure of how much to invest okay. you know like let's say you have 10 lakhs and you can't find a number for everyone right mm. everyone have every individual has a different story mm. they have a different background age will be different their risk appetite will be different so my co-founder asif he is a financial planner which means that ipo uh, nammala app il thanne there is a section that you can actually talk to him and mm. so he will understand he'll sit with you and try to understand your age your profession mm. how much of a risk that you can take so he'll tell you so ningalde kayil if you have 10 lakhs he'll tell you how much you should invest in crypto mm. so nammalde approach is broadly you know a diversified approach i mean mm. you're not we don't tell people put everything in crypto mm. right because uh, i think again you know mm. i think we as a community we made that mistake at a point where we said stock is only giving this much you should mm. invest in crypto but i think that is a wrong way of looking at it because mm. it's also important to see the risk right stock mm. doesn't fall 80% like the industry, you know the the entire asset class doesn't fall 80% mm. so it's important that we uh, talk about the risk aspect also and i think the best way to control the risk is by reducing the uh exposure that you have mm. so we typically try to tell people not to put more than 10% of their net worth into crypto mm. and adile 1 to 10% is what is the range mm. it depends on how what you know what kind of a person you are right mm. so we try to understand and help you out there also Amazing. so uh, there's a lot of value uh, so not just in terms of investment but mm. you know th- our idea is to be with you Right, yeah. you know, be with you from day one to wherever, whenever you try to cash out mm. your assets, right? So, uh, so like I said, uh, you might not be getting the best uh, custody solutions mm. on an exchange, but mm. if uh, uh, you know any, for example, right now you you ETF is in news, right? Mm. So if you've seen uh, the Bitcoin that BlackRock buys mm. will not be stored in a self custody wallet; yeah. it will be stored in a. In, institutional custody solution with mm. multi uh, you know like multi approval systems and mm. all those things right mm. we follow the same uh, we have the same uh, custody mm. uh, you know solution mm. so you get more you know the it's more secured mm. with us mm. uh, compared to storing it on an exchange as well mm. right so and and having said all that it's crypto so it's, yeah. there is risk so yeah. uh, it is we have the insurance coverage also to okay. cover for anything you know that okay. that can potentially go wrong tomorrow Amazing. so and there is one thing i feel that you know you essentially made the whole crypto investment easier through making it uh, uh, making user to invest in crypto through a mutual fund Correct. Uh, strategy right and which is also very interesting but uh, for the audience who are you know listening to you of course you have mentioned black row some right, other right, right. and etf also came into picture right. so if you could just break down what mutual fund is and what etf is it would be it would be great yeah so mutual fund is basically you giving your money mm. to a professional fund manager mm. so that is where the mutual part of it comes up right yeah. like you are you are putting the money they are bringing their expertise and mm. they are doing it for you yeah. they are basically managing it for you mm. so that is the mutual fund concept right now in india there are almost i think 45 uh mutual fund houses mm-hmm. that that does this for you in the equity in the traditional market mm. uh you don't have a lot of them uh, mm. in the crypto space that is where bitsave comes in mm. uh now uh that is just the fund and now mm. what is an etf etf is basically exchange traded fund okay. so right now the only way to buy this fund mm. that we have is to come to bitsave Mm. right you come to bit save you tell that i need this fund for this much of money mm. we will give you that to you directly mm. now tomorrow or let's say traditionally if you look at it another way to buy the fund would be go to an exchange okay that is the fund house and the exchange has to come together mm. and say that we will list this fund on mm. the exchange for people to trade Okay. Got it. For example, just like how Bitcoin is being traded mm. now, fund as an asset. You mean it's fund as an so basically we have this thing of units of the fund. Okay. So what what we essentially buy is the unit of the fund. So let's yeah. say BlackRock has a fund. Mm. You b- go and buy the units of the fund. Okay. So the units gets listed on exchanges. For example, mm. it gets listed on something like a Nasdaq. Mm. Right. Now the advantage is that tomorrow. you don't have to go to the fund house okay. to buy the fund 
you can go to the exchange and buy the fund mm-hmm. got it now uh, the other advantage would be that if you go to a fund house for some fund there might be a lock in mm. uh, you might not be able to sell we don't have any lock ins mm. uh, but some funds if you buy for one year you may not be able to sell it mm. but exchange fund and i think the biggest difference is that fund houses or mutual funds are issued only at one point in a day got it so i can't choose the price at which i buy or sell Mm. which is which can be a bit tricky for some people mm. for example uh you know let's say it it's all it's all issued at one point for example in india it's done at uh, 330 mm. when the market closes that mm. is when they issue the units uh, we we follow us market timing because the index mm. the bloomberg index is also you know they follow the us market timing so mm. we issue the units at 230 am Okay. Uh, so you you only get the price that is prevailing at that particular point in time, mm. right? Uh, but if it's being traded on exchange, mm. you can buy or sell at any point in time. Mm. So uh, you don't have to be bothered about market being closed or I mean the let's say uh, during the daytime you can't you know mm. get those prices right uh, if if you're directly buying the fund. But if it's if you're doing it on the exchange, you can buy and sell whenever you want. Mm. And uh, typically the fees is also a bit lower for ETFs compared to uh, okay. the fund. Okay. Uh, so because of that, uh, some people prefer ETFs over the fund. Mm. But you may not get that personalized. you know service like i was talking about let's say if i if we list a bitcoin sorry uh, if we list a bit safe fund on an exchange mm-hmm. and if you're going and buying our etf mm-hmm. you may not get the other services that i was Come talking about yeah. so we may not be able to hand hold you because you are basically the user on the exchange and not yeah. our client on yeah. paper right so uh, it it depends on your profile as in mm-hmm. which one you pr- uh, you prefer if you're mm-hmm. a trader etf is the best way to go but if yeah. you're a long term investor fund is the best way to i go. think we would need another hour to discuss about how the etf <laughs> the whole etf works yeah. and mutual fund works yeah. but the whole platform when i downloaded it and when i used it i think i i felt that okay it's welcoming now and and when when they get the whole idea of how the mutual fund work and how you can buy each unit for this price yeah. and hold it for a long time yeah. if you have that sort of long term mentality then yeah. it's a one one stop solution yeah. And yeah. i believe correct, correct. and uh, one thing i really wanted to ask you before i end this podcast uh, we would be definitely uh, de- diving into the entrepreneur journey and 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 you know the, the dark side of <laughs> building product in web3 yeah, of course ex- maybe in next podcast yeah, also yeah, yeah. but i really want to know when i introduced you to the audience i said that you are a certified you are a qualified uh, trader right because you cleared some level of uh three levels three levels yeah. uh so uh, we we want you to tell us what is cmt yeah. and if there is a trader or an yeah. investor looking at yeah. uh, watching this podcast yeah. i think it could be really valuable for them if Correct. they could just go and take that uh, course and then they could also call themselves as certified right, right, or right. qualified right. traders right right so yeah uh, as a three level certified <laughs> qualified trader yeah. cmt trader how uh, how how was how was that experience and how would you suggest a trader should take this yeah. course and do about go about it yeah. i think you know we find most traders that we meet right mm. they are all self taught yeah. or let's say maybe they watched youtube videos here and there but if you actually look at it right if you want to do something as a profession mm. let's say uh, if you want to spend full time into something mm. i think it's important that you have uh, some professional learnings mm. you know for example uh, let's say if you before you pick up your first job mm. there's like 12 years of schooling and 4 years of college right True. that kind of a i mean not everything was relevant but mm. at least i think the college part might be a bit more relevant to what you do right yeah. um so but we don't find that with traders right? mm. you you watch a youtube video and tomorrow most of us are and you call yourself a trader <laughs> you call yourself a trader yeah so i think uh, what cmt is is basically a a professional course professionally so designed form of cmt uh, cmt is chartered market technician okay so it is a professional course i think for our audience to easily relate it can, you can see it most something like a ca mm. for trading okay. so ca what ca is for accounting mm. cmt is for traders for okay. trading so it gives you in depth knowledge of each indicator each trading strategy uh, why uh, you know each asset selection strategy and also it touch up touch upon a lot about the psychology part of trading which uh, which a lot of us miss out right yeah, because correct. 
see anyone can teach you indicators anyone can True. teach you charts but at the end of the day the difference comes in how you handle it's all about the mind all about the mind mm-hmm. right so and i think we are we humans are wired in a, there's a lot of biases like initially i was talking about right we have recency bias we have sunk cost bias there's a lot of there's a whole different topic altogether so when it comes to professional traders mm-hmm. they know this okay. they know the psychology of people who are on the other side yeah so you don't have an advantage mm-hmm. if you're on the other side because mm-hmm. you are competing with asset managers of big fund houses mm-hmm. who are professionally qualified mm-hmm. and that is why you have these you know like scam wicks or mm-hmm. uh, failed breakdowns mm-hmm. breakouts because they do it to trick you they course. they they make sure that your stop loss is hit mm. right before they short or t- they take along mm. right so i think if you if you understand the how the game is played mm. uh, you have a better advantage mm. uh, of winning or you increases your odds of being successful mm. so uh, it gives you a overall view okay. uh, it gives you it gives you tools Mm. so you may not be using everything that is in the course but okay. it gives you a view of uh, every tool that you have mm. so at the end of it you can pick which ones you know whatever that is suiting you mm. the most uh, so uh, from a from a skill perspective it makes a lot of difference personally for me uh, i did not get the chance to learn it the right way and a lot okay. of things i was just using it because it was working for me mm. but during cmt i learned why i was why this matters mm. or let's say in some of the indicators you might see an input as 14 days okay right now for example the reason why uh, or let's say you might see 10 days and the reason why 10 days exists is because typically in stock market you have 5 day trading weeks okay so 10 is basically 2 uh, weeks okay. right now if i don't learn that i can't apply the same thing in crypto because crypto trades 7 days yeah. right so i should make it 14 for crypto mm. if you if i'm applying it for a chart yeah. in crypto right so learning why these things exist or why the, uh, every number mm. what what they represent it helps you a lot mm. from a skill perspective mm. and from a qualification perspective you're going to apply a job in mm. a in a fund management or a prop trading firm mm. they would obviously need uh, you know prefer someone with a professional qualification mm. right so C- cfa has been the gold standard so far but i see cmt is also picking up recently and a lot of fund managers who are not cfas but just cmts okay So I've cleared three levels of it. Now I have to uh, give a sort of a report to them, showing mm-hmm. how my how I do my analysis, and then they'll be certifying me. Uh, you know, uh, or let's say uh, I can call myself CMT Sagil Suresh. Yeah, so, as a financial advisor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. my analysis will have some sort of a value. Yeah. Over someone. Yeah. Else. So I think every uh, someone, every you know, like every. Uh, new trader mm. they should ac- at least uh, check it out uh, mm. it's there's a it's a us based course basically mm. and it's in three levels you can give every level every six months so okay. the m- the minimum duration is going to be one and a half years but i'm telling you it's going to be worth it okay so i, I don't think this is enough for me because i i need to learn a lot of things from you and the audience is also waiting to listen to that financial expert on a side um <laughs> uh, we should definitely do one more podcast this is not not at all enough but anyway i got to wind up for the time being and uh, i got to let you free uh, because you can travel and you can come back again and do it to do one more time because we should definitely explore that entrepreneurial journey of yeah. uh, zakil himself and uh, we have to explore that dark side of one of especially when especially that kill because people only see the glorious side of it that glamorous journey of a trader crypto investor trader people always say that oh mr bhai it's a thing but uh, then grinding the challenge that yeah. comes along with it it's it's a, it's uh, it's another level but we both are i can relate i hope yeah. uh, we both are kind of enjoying that pain yeah. and that journey yeah. and we know that it's it's a long it's a long run it's process it's a process and uh, we both are enjoying that process and uh, and i'm i'm happy to contribute and help you uh, and your company as well yeah. in any way possible and this is a pleasure sharing uh, this podcast with <laughs> you and looking forward to have some more brainstorming discussion sure, uh, afterwards yeah. yeah thank you so much for coming in thank you for yeah. having this is actually in fact my first offline podcast and yeah it was great thank you so much yeah Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs>